accusing Dr. Kevin Moldrum of Moldrum Family Dentistry of providing negligent treatment that left her disfigured. We're taking up the case for National Report Court today with Dwayne Cates. He's an attorney. Brock Lurie, also an attorney. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, gentlemen. For the purposes of today's segment alone, Dwayne, if you could okay. represent the plaintiff, Ms. Wilson. Brock, if you would please defend the dentist, that is Dr. Moldrum. Uh, thank you both again. So here we go. Ms. Wilson's legal team reportedly retaining another dentist to provide an expert opinion and then review the medical records. And then this is what happened. He said, quote, Katie required a slow, thoughtful, careful, and measured response to her disease. Trying to fill every hole, every tooth in her mouth in one visit is not only the antithesis of what was indicated, it is not humanly possible to achieve in an effective or constructive manner. Dwayne, just from, a, again, an, a, a third party view here, is this a strong case? Your thoughts? Yes, every case comes down, every malpractice case comes down to a battle of experts, okay? Because one of the things they have to prove is, is, is did they do the right thing? Was it, the, was, it, was it medically necessary? Did it fit the standards of what everybody would, everybody would agree should have been done? And in this case, kind of everybody agrees that it shouldn't have been done this way. I mean, th there should have been some sort of triage and fixed a couple things at a time because the human body just can't, can't endure that much uh, dental work. I mean, can you imagine five, six hours in a dental chair? Uh, you know, it, it had to be just absolutely grueling. And then the body has a really hard time healing that much injury. Yeah, I, I mean, it just sounds terrible. Normally we think uh, dentist visits are no fun. This one, extremely <laughs> painful. Um, but Barack, we wanted to obviously get the perspective of the dentist here. So Moldrum has not filed a response or officially offered a comment, but what would be the defense in this case? Well, there will be a defense. I mean, let's, I agree with Dwayne that this will be a battle of the experts at some point. Uh, it has to be a battle of the experts. Was this below the, the reasonable standard of care for a dentist? Uh, and in this case, they hired an expert, but it's really more of a consultant for purposes of evaluating whether or not they have a case at all. Uh, when it comes down to the experts to actually retain as experts uh, and then present themselves at trial, that's going to be a very different story as well. So we don't know the response from the dentist. I would imagine that they would uh, respond with two basic things. One, uh, what are the damages associated with this? Uh, is the disfigurement, as they claim, uh, a real disfigurement? We don't know. We don't have pictures of it. So it, it may be that it was below the standard of care that uh, he, he performed the surgery over five hours and such. Uh, seems very uncomfortable to me, but uh, with anesthesia and, and being uh, put under uh, during that time, uh, that would be seem like a blip for any sort of patient. So we don't know. Um, I'm sure he's going to be able to present to an expert that will say that this is actually appropriate and more efficient this way uh, because all these things could be done. This is way too early on in the case to decide whether or not this fell below the standard of care. So we'll have to see. Uh, the last thing I'll say is there is an argument about emotional distress that she raised. Uh, those are extremely difficult to establish in trial. Uh, we'll have to see whether or not she can establish that. She would also have to invoke all sorts of psychiatrists uh, and other emotional support uh, therapists. And that's really a challenge. So we'll see. Uh, it, the jury is still out, literally. All right, let's go back to Dwayne on this because what we do know is Ms. Wilson, the plaintiff here, also accusing Muldrum of providing an unsafe dosage of anesthesia mm -hmm. and then falsifying medical records to cover this up. Again, that from the plaintiff from the lawsuit. So, Dwayne, how would that also play into this case? It's going to be big. This case will never see a jury. Can you imagine? Uh, it's going to settle at some point. Can you imagine a jury? you know, hearing about, you know, being in the dentist chair for five, every, every, nobody likes to go to the dentist. It's like coming to see a criminal defense lawyer. Nobody likes to go there because things aren't going good when you go there. And going to a dentist, nobody looks forward to going to the dentist, let alone sitting in a dentist chair for five and a half hours. This would be, this is a case that the insurance companies are going to want to dump. They're going to want to dump it quickly. You know, Barack, when you look back through records, any indication that the dentist would have on file what she was coming in for, how many procedures would have supposed to take place in that one-time visit, and would that match up with what they might, might have agreed upon before she sat in the chair? Yeah, it could very well be that they agreed to, to have this all done at one time for all sorts of reasons. We just don't know. Uh, the dentist will have to explain himself as to why this, this happened the way it did. I, I'm, look, I'm not a dentist. I don't think any of us are dentists. 
Uh, there are some times that you do want to go to a dentist and perform a couple of different things that are necessary at the same time. Who knows whether this was reasonable or not? Uh, I, I, I'm sure, I'm very confident that he will present an expert that will say that all those things at the same time uh, were appropriate. I, I will say that I'm very curious about the falsification of records, if that's actually true, and to what extent was it actually significant and material uh, in the issue and, and whether it led to the damages that she's claiming. Yeah, a lot of unanswered questions, it seems like. We've got some follow-ups yeah. here. Uh, Barack and Dwayne, great arguments. Stand by if you can. Wanted to welcome in Deneen Borelli, Newsmax contributor. She's been listening in. Going to play judge and jury in this case. Deneen, where do you land on this one? My first thought is she should sue herself. I mean, I've been to the dentist numerous times, and I know you cannot have all of this work done in one day. And again, these are allegations from her. Four root canals, eight dental crowns, 20 fillings. I'm done after one filling. So I, I question all of this work that was done. But um, looking at what I have read so far, um, I would ba I basically side with Dwayne because uh, if, the, if this did happen and this dentist did all this work in one day, I think that is negligence and inhumane on his part to do so. And also, who else has this happened to, if, if that is the case with these allegations? Yeah, I want to know what was planned going into the room <laughs> and how did that ultimately happen? Right. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. No, no fun. No fun for anyone involved. Um, Barack and Dwayne and Deneen, thank you very much. With that, National Report Court <laughs> is adjourned. Coming Thanks, up, John and I'm Thank you. Okay, 2024 presidential candidate Nikki Haley calling out head of the Iowa caucuses. Why she's accusing the GOP frontrunner of...